end of the line for banks. They don't want you to find out. Stock up on food today. Many Americans rely on routine whenever they take a visit to their local Walmart or Target. And with that routine is an added expectation of the quality that we'll be able to buy once we get inside. As inflation not only affects the consumer, but also the companies that produce the goods. Many of those who buy the usual goods that they've always bought before, they've started to notice a new trend. Most items now come in smaller packages, but they carry the same price. Is this fair for consumers? Also, shortage are now being expected as food supply chains continue to affect the global market. Are you ready for such an event? Is your family ready for such an event? And banks are trying to hide losses from investors as the housing market starts to crumble. Welcome to today's video and for your daily dose of the truth when it comes to our economy, the stock market, global happenings, and much, much more. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also make sure your notification bell is turned on. We appreciate you guys dropping a like for the videos. Now let's get on with it. Banks are in trouble and they're trying to hide it from all of us. That's right savings banks, checking account banks, savings and loan banks. Now it's hard to think that the likes of JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and Bank of America taking losses during a time when interest rates are skyrocketing. But there's a story that they're unwilling to tell, one that even mainstream media avoids. Why? Well, they may be under the influence of some of these banks. Just like it did back in 2008, the housing market may start the crash of everything that surrounds it. A recent article outlines that the mortgage market is showing $17 billion in paper losses for banks. Now, when we talk about banks, it's about the big four that we just mentioned, and the unrealized losses lie in mortgage-backed securities. Now, let's dig a little bit deeper into what's really happening behind the scenes here. The housing market is due for a crash, and it is evident as home sales continue to plummet. Americans and their lack of cash flow are instead building debt and continue to be delinquent on payments. Last October was the ninth straight month that home sales have dropped in the country, and higher mortgages continue to scare off potential buyers. The higher interest rates are also pushing the value of assets down. This means less demand as there's less reason for people to get into housing or take out home loans. They would fare better if they opted for two-year bonds that are now paying yields of up to 4.1%. Now, as less people are rushing to buy homes, banks are looking at unrealized losses and see it as a hindrance for their capital boost. With that, buybacks will probably remain on pause amid capital headwinds. According to their CEO, quote, when it comes to managing capital, we should be extremely conscious of what the risks are that are around us. Those are all reasons, given where we are today, to be more conservative on capital rather than less conservative, end quote. Wells Fargo took a $2.4 billion hit in unrealized losses on mortgage-backed securities and other bonds that weighed on shareholder equity in the third quarter. Equity is assets minus your liabilities. Even though higher interest rates have made their earnings look good, it's not enough to mask their losses on their balance sheet. What they're doing is taking these mortgage-backed securities and putting it on their balance sheet called hold to maturity portfolios so that they show up as paper losses and boost capital. They thought that they could hide this from us, maybe make us feel better about the economy, but the truth always comes out no matter how painful it is. Why is the narrative still about how the housing market won't crash? The excuse is that the inventory remains low and this in turn keeps the prices of houses high. But what's really happening? Now, a quick check of housing inventory in the United States will quickly stamp out all hope as we are now seeing an increase of inventory in the housing market. Now, you do the math. With interest rates at almost 7% and while supply is going back to normal, even higher than usual levels, where do you think housing values will go? Prices will eventually go down as demand is incredibly weakened. Real estate investors and those in housing flipping, they also stand to lose a lot of money. This is what investors risk each and every single day in real estate, but this could be a loss of incredible proportions. And at the same time, opportunities may open up as it is clear that we have not yet seen the bottom. The bottom may be what the government is aiming for when it comes to our fuel reserves, as we are now within 20 to 25 days on running out of diesel. 
President Biden has unveiled his plan to release 15 million barrels of oil from the U.S. Strategic Reserve in response to OPEC Plus production cuts. Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman joins us now with the details. Hey, Rick. Hey. Uh, right. So uh, Biden is now going to uh, release more oil from the U.S. Strategic Reserve and other 15 mil million barrels. This is a continuation of a program that's been going on since uh, since May. And that was originally supposed to end in October, and it has now been extended into November and then into December. And I wonder why that might be. Oh, it could only be the midterm elections. Biden obviously wants to look like he's doing something continually to get uh, gasoline prices down. There's another important element of this, though, that's new. It's getting uh, less attention, but it might be more important. Uh, the by the uh, Energy Department is going to do something new, and they're going to uh, enter into contracts to buy oil from the private sector, from the market, um, at prices of around $70. And the reason that's important is that it is telling uh, oil producers that there's going to be demand for oil even when the price falls below uh, current levels. Um, so, uh, so the government is kind of establishing itself as a customer of last resort, if you will. And the thinking behind this is uh, oil producers will say, Oh, well, if oil prices fall, we will still be able to sell it to the government uh, at prices where we can make a profit. And so that's a little bit of extra demand that producers know will be there in the future. And that might get them to produce more oil. We will find out this goes all the way into 23, 24 and, and probably even into 2025. So it's meant to have a long term effect on oil supplies. Now, although this is under the pretense that refineries and imports of diesel were to also stop today, both of which are still continuing. But it does make you worry about the state of our country and its ability to move goods around. A diesel shortage may not be happening today, but it is not impossible given the circumstances that we're in. Food, though, is another matter as it is hard to deny that shortages lie within it. Some experts say that a food shortage is just as deadly as a global pandemic, and we know how that played out for the entire world. Dr. Roe McFarlane, a public health expert, shared this statement about a possible global food shortage. Quote, we've been talking about these very scenarios for 50 years. We've been speculating. We've been measuring. We've been applying our minds to make predictive models. But for various reasons, we have not been taken particularly seriously. End quote. Harsh weather and war between Russia and the Ukraine, some of the world's main exporters of wheat, they have added to the fears of more food being on short supply. And even if items remain on the shelves, there's a subtle difference compared to what we could buy a few years ago. Food manufacturers are becoming much more crafty with how they present their products. One common tactic that manufacturers are leaning on is shrinking their products while selling them at the same price. This strategy or tactic is called shrinkflation and they make the changes without saying a word. This ensures that they will get their profits while the consumers get less of their products. The need to stock up on supplies now is no longer a warning. It is now a firm statement as inflation will continue to eat into our wallets and into our budgets and even into the food that we buy. How are you and your family preparing to face possible shortages and those that are now already underway? Feel free to share your own experiences and insights into this and regarding everything we discussed today. And before I go, please make sure to smash the thumbs up button for the video. And if you're new to the channel and you want to keep updated with everything that matters to you regarding our economy and your money, make sure to subscribe. I wish you all great health and I will see you guys on the next one.